Good day. I'm Deborah Colburn here at Mount Vernon with our Historic Trades Department, ready to tell you a wonderful story about George Washington's fiber industry here on the estate. George Washington grew flax as a hedgerow, a living fence on his fields that could protect his crops from wind. Flax was harvested in early summer when it was pulled from the ground by the root. Fibers of the flax plant grew along the entire length of the plant from root to tip. When the plants had dried, they were run through a ripple, a comb made of dull iron nails to remove the seed pods. George Washington would save the seeds from the pods for next year's crop and for the making of linseed oil. After the flax was rippled, it was redded. Redding rotted the stalk of the flax plant slightly so that it would become brittle and would shatter to release the fibers. Once the redded flax had dried again, it was crushed in a flax break. The flax break shattered the brittle woody stalk on the inside of the plant and released the hair-like fibers that ran up and down the outside of the stalk. Flax was then placed on a scutching board where it was scraped with a blunt wooden scutching knife to soften the plant fibers and remove any bits of stalk that might still cling to the fine hair-like fibers of the plant. This time-consuming process had significant impact on the quality of the finished thread and ultimately the fabric. Flax was next brushed out by running it through hackle combs made of sharp iron nails. Hackles detangled the delicate flax fibers and separated out any fibers that were too short to make quality fabric. These short, coarse fibers, called toe, could be recombed to make burlap and toe sack. Tangled toe could be used to stuff pillows, light fires, or scrub pots and pans. Now the flax could be spun into linen thread. George Washington had a team of skilled enslaved spinners. When flax was spun, the fibers were typically tied or wrapped on a distaff, a wooden stand attached to the spinning wheel. The spinner wet the fibers with her fingers, making the fibers sticky and binding them together. The linen produced at Mount Vernon became undergarments and summer clothes for the enslaved workers.